We're here meeting with Tracy DePellegrin, Executive Director of the Genetic Society of America and Executive Editor of the journals Genetics and G3 to talk about what the Early Career Leadership Program means to participants and to GSA. Tracy, how do early career scientists fit in here? Thanks, Jessica. Students and postdocs are the future of the field. We want to understand your challenges and provide opportunities and to help in any way we can. Your success is tremendously important to the whole community, now and for years to come. Not everyone realizes this, but early career scientists typically make up around half our membership. So the GSA board made a decision a few years ago to focus on enhancing our programs for early career members. What are some of the impacts the program can have on early career scientists? The genesis of the leadership program was to give students and postdocs a more active voice, both within the GSA and which, within the scientific community. I just had a listening session with the early career scientist leaders. It was a great dialogue. We can even put into place some of the requests right away. At the same time, we wanted participants to come away with concrete benefits, no matter what your career pathway or the support you may or may not have at your institution. For example, you can build up your network, add new achievements to your CV or resume, and develop leadership and communication skills. Not everyone stays at the bench, and it's important to recognize that and to provide support for those scientists. It's competitive out there for jobs, and participating in our program will give you a real edge. We've seen this countless times as program participants transition to jobs in industry, to tenure tra track positions, postdocs, and even jobs at GSA. You can truly make a difference to GSA, to your community, and to bolstering your own corpus of knowledge and experience. You can serve on an early career scientist committee like communications, career development, or multimedia. You might conduct interviews of other scientists, help create materials for advocacy, shape the agenda of our equity and inclusion efforts, and meet with GSA board members to talk about the issues that matter most to you. How else is this engagement important to GSA? Well, what the staff and the board of directors have really loved about this program is having extensive engagement with early career members. Rather than just a handful of early career representatives on committees, we now get input from a wider range of voices, so GSA really is your society. Finally, we all know that peer-to-peer -peer support is important now more than ever. GSA connects you with others who share your struggles, share your interests, and share your excitement about your scientific discoveries. Committee members focus their efforts on helping other early career scientists. So the program impacts not just those who are participating in the program, but all the other early career members and scientists in the broader community. It's making a difference every day. I'm Lin Ho. I'm a PhD student at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland, and I am one of the co-chairs of the Community and Membership Engagement Subcommittee. Hi, my name is Hassan Bukhari. I'm a postdoc at Brigham Women's Hospital Harvard Medical School. I'm the co-chair of Multimedia Subcommittee at GSA's Early Career Leadership Program. Hi, uh, my name is Rupinder Kaur, and I am a research assistant professor uh, at the Pennsylvania State University in State College, Pennsylvania. Uh, I am a member of a careers development subcommittee in the ECLP program. My name is David Petey. I'm a fourth year PhD student at Brown University. I am the co-chair of the multimedia subcommittee. Hi, my name is Abhinav Mishra. Uh, I'm a postdoc at University of California, Santa Barbara, Kansas. And uh, I am a member of the Career Development Subcommittee. My name is Julio Molina Pineda. I'm a fourth year PhD student in the Cell and Molecular Biology program at the University of Arkansas. And I'm the second year co chair for the Policy and Advocacy Subcommittee. Hello, my name is Irina Yushenova, and I'm a research scientist at Marine Biological Laboratory in Vauxhall, USA. I'm also a member of Community and Membership Engagement Subcommittee. Hello, everyone. My name is Jesse McAlpine. I'm currently a postdoctoral fellow at the University of Toronto, transitioning to be a postdoctoral fellow at the National Institutes of Health. And I am the co-chair of the Communication and Outreach Subcommittee for the ECLP. 
When I decided to join the ECLP Early Career Leadership Program, I really wanted to find a way to expand how I give back to the scientific community. So I've always been really, really passionate about science communication. And when I found out there was a communication and outreach subcommittee, I knew that was exactly what I wanted to join. I wanted to be able to share genetics information and what we do as a society and what the genetics community does as a whole with the broader public. And I wanted to be able to do that to all age groups. So not just, you know, youth interested in science or undergrads interested in careers in genetics, but also to the general public, but that might just be interested in topical news related to genetics or how scientists use genetics to make fundamental biological discoveries. And so I was really excited to be able to join the committee and work towards that goal. I then also wanted to join the committee to kind of expand my skill set within that area. So to meet other like-minded scientists, other people who are passionate about outreach and communication, and then to work together towards developing our communication skills. So written, oral, uh, any skills that would help us us to continue to spread useful genetics information and reach out to communities that might not normally be engaged with our community uh, and the society in general. I learned about the ECLP through my advisor here at University of Arkansas. Um, he has a lot of respect for the GSA and all they do, and he mentioned this, this uh, program and how competitive it was. But I really appreciated the mission of the program itself, um, which I think aligned with my goals in general. I'm originally from Honduras, and I came to the U.S. to pursue my undergraduate degrees and a career in research. So I thought that uh, the ECLP program was a great fit because um, it aims to um, help scientists from all different backgrounds, especially geneticists from all different backgrounds to come together and have an, an avenue to share ideas, uh, learn uh, stuff that's not maybe not available in their institutions. Um, but in, in general, I just thought that the, the program was a, a great fit for what I wanted. I have always been interested in uh, the intersection between politics and science, um, especially how our governments uh, make sure that our science is ethical and stays within ethical boundaries. So it was kind of a no brainer for me to, to try and join the policy and advocacy uh, subcommittee. Um, and and I, in, in general, I just thought that it would be a, a, a fun activity and that, I, and that I could learn a lot from the program and the program had a lot to offer. I joined the GSA's Early Career Leadership Program because I am deeply passionate about genetics and its potential to drive scientific advancements and uh, improve our understanding of the world around us. So this program really offers a unique opportunity for me to engage with my fellow early career professionals who share my interest, right? And uh, to also learn from the established leaders in the field. Um, so I believe that by actively participating in the GSA's Early Career Leadership Program, I can gain the tools to enhance my leadership skills, expand my network, uh, and most significantly contribute meaningfully to the genetic research community all around. I really want to say to all people that Early Career Leadership Program give you an amazing opportunity to express your creativity. Currently, I work in a small institution, so there are not so many possibilities to do more than just your research. And at ACLP, you really can do whatever you want. Well, of course, we still um, only do good stuff with Stricted. It's not like group of people like teenagers go together to do crazy stuff. No, we actually can help scientific community in a way we see would be useful. We can cover those spots which we are missing ourselves. And uh, it's also us getting a lot out of GSA and ECLP program because we can attend a lot of courses like writing courses or career advancement courses, all of it, you don't want to miss, guys. My long-term research goal is to establish an independent research program at a leading research institute 
where I will investigate the role of DNA damage repair in the pathogenesis of neurodegenerative disorders, such as Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. Along the same lines, I aim to educate the future generation of scientists and narrow the bridge between scientific community and the general public by using multimedia channels. As a geneticist using Drosophila genetics to investigate the pathways contributing to the disease, I was aware of the resourcefulness of GSA. Last year, I became aware of the GSA Early Career Leadership Program and was particularly interested in joining the multimedia subcommittee as it aligned well with my future research goals. Um, I aligned with the vision of the GSA that the early career scientists are the future of the research community and they can bring about the element of change in, in, in teaching, uh, training and research and also in the leadership. So to further this mission, I joined the Early Career Leadership Program or the ECLP of the GSA. And especially this program has allowed me to learn some of the unaddressed issues uh, related to the Early Career Scientist community in great detail, and especially in the context of genetics-based uh, teaching and research. So as a member of the Career Development Subcommittee, we took the initiative and uh, to propose and organize a career exploration panel uh, workshop during the Basafila conferences in 2022 and 2023. And uh, we received an overwhelming response from the attendees. More than 80% of the attendees were showing interest in pursuing a career outside academia. Most of them were grad students or also postdocs. Uh, and many of these attendees were, uh, they wished to explore the clinical or the translational value of their genetics-based basic science research and uh, the potential of this research in addressing some of the pressing issues that are currently focused on the major industries. So, so we had a very positive discussion and we had a very positive feedback after. So this was only one of the aspects of the early career research uh, interest that I was able to cater to uh, through these workshops. Uh, it was quite a simple uh, application process. So first we needed to submit a survey and in the survey, we had to explain why we are motivated to be part of the early career leadership program and which strength and skills we have. We also had to decide which subcommittee we would like to be in. The next step was the interview with the GSA engagement, which lasted only 15 minutes or so, where we had to justify our motivation again and our fit in a certain subcommittee. So I also applied as a co-chair for a subcommittee, so I could meet my fellow co-chair from the subcommittee in a separate meeting and get asked about my leadership skills. And if the interviews were well received, we got invited to join the program as a member or as a co-chair. So I was quite stressed about it, but actually there's no need for it because everybody was very nice and quite curious about the applicants and just wanted to see that you want to join the program because of interior motivation. For me, the favorite project that I have worked on, which is currently ongoing, is that we're working on revamping the social media presence of our communications and outreach subcommittee. So with this in mind, we're going to be um, hosting within the GSA Instagram account to develop posts that will be focused on communicating interesting and topical genetics information to the public and to help people better understand what it's like to be a scientist and to be a genetic Assist. So with that in mind, we're working on developing Instagram posts that will um, kind of shed light on what we do as scientists, provide a little bit more information on why genetics are so cool and why they're such a powerful tool to study science with, and to hopefully just provide people with more information on what uh, our society is promoting and supporting in terms of the broader genetics community. So I'm really excited to launch that and, and get that off the bat and then to hopefully continue to, to spread really cool genetics information in a, a more public setting via this Instagram account. I enjoy any interaction with people from my subcommittee. Currently, I'm involved in like free project and uh, it's super hard to pick one of them because I've been involved with a conference welcome. It's a small event when we help early career people to feel uh, 
feel better at conference, really understand what's going on and learning how to get as much as possible out of this networking event. We also work on the leadership dialogue series. Stay tuned for that one being available on YouTube. And uh, that project is amazing and well. And uh, myself, I uh, lead a peer support group. So in the community and membership engagement subcommittee that I'm in, we have a project called Leadership Dialogue Series Proposal, where we invite to, uh, leaders that are known to be good leaders to discuss with us what a good leader means to them and what is important for them or essential to lead a group. So we plan to publish the interviews on YouTube. We had initial meetings to explain more details about the program to the invited leaders. And it was quite um, insightful and inspiring. So I'm actually very excited to share the video soon. And also uh, GSA CLP has provided me the opportunity to expand my uh, network of the early career scientists uh, across the R1, R2, or the PUIs, and also from various background, backgrounds and to understand the various specific but the diverse need of the educator researchers. So with their inputs, um, I'm currently helping GSA in their ongoing initiatives for the early career researchers at the level of the career or the professional development and policy management. And also time to time, we propose new initiatives uh, with, uh, to help the uh, holistic development of the early career scientists. So, yeah. We have monthly meeting. Those are amazing. Any interaction so far I have with my peers, it just fills me up with energy. We have uh, so many creative people located everywhere across the globe that it's hard sometimes. Of course, if you wonder how we can communicate, you know, having one person located in Pacific uh, coast of United States, West Coast, and another one in China, and still it is doable because all of us come together to do something great, creative, and super useful for our peers, as well as courses we can attend because I deeply enjoyed a writing course, which currently I'm finishing, for example, learn so much, you advance uh, your skills. ECLP representatives have numerous opportunities to participate in courses from preparing material for job searches to academic writing and developing leadership skills. I participated in an academic research writing course by ECLP. It was such a great learning experience for me. As a postdoc, I have some experience in writing, but there is always a room for improvement. As a postdoc, I'm in training phase, and this was such a phenomenal experience to get trained by a highly trained coach. The class size in this program was reasonable, and the instructor had plenty of time to discuss individual materials from all the candidates. I found it an enriching experience as I'm writing manuscript and preparing materials for my academic job searches in the coming season. I'm also looking forward to participating in the leadership course in the fall of this year. In summary, ECLP has plenty of training courses for its representatives, which will significantly help early career leaders when they set out for future leadership roles. Furthermore, I was also excited about the opportunity to network and connect with fellow geneticists and seek guidance from the, from the faculty advisors at ECLP. See the diversity of scientists from different countries and disciplines of biology within the ECLP. This gave me a unique opportunity to connect and network with these early career leaders, and some of those will eventually be deriving the field of genetics in the coming years and decades. Um, so far, I've had like really significant great and interesting experience, if I may say. Uh, working with the teams in the GSA. In the past, I have coordinated with the GSA staff and committee members to organize several workshops, such as the career exploration panel workshops, or the scientists with a career outside the lab uh, uh, kind of workshop, where we discuss the work-life balances, and more recently about the digital health and the finance-related careers in the biotech industry. So these events were received with many positive feedbacks uh, from the attendees, and uh, while these workshops were really helpful for them to, uh, to uh, shape up their careers, 
Uh, they also encouraged us as the early career leaders uh, within the GSA to discuss the challenges that the early career scientists uh, encounter when they transition from one step to the next step in their careers while uh, also maintaining the work-life balances. So as career development uh, subcommittee members of the ECLP, we are currently working on a comprehensive uh, career development toolkit to help the early career scientists with the next move of uh, the career initiative. And in addition, I also represented the early career scientists last year in the GSA, the awards uh, audit task force, where we proposed the inclusion of the early career scientists awards for, uh, for the early career researchers who use these model organisms, such as the SOFILA, to make the translation discovery. So also some of the colleagues have started the ACLP peer support program to help and guide the fellow scientists with their next budget moves. And uh, GSA has also been instrumental in organizing many other workshops and programs, such as the one that is upcoming and I'm looking forward to it is the Leadership and the Management Team Action Program. And uh, on, also the Science Policy Training course that is organized with the FASSET and the GSA to guide the interested scientists in these domains. So, and I've been a part of most of these activities, so I can vouch that being an active scientist, even outside the lab and not just on the bench, has been the most exciting experience for me so far. So the most exciting experience is when you get the feeling that the project is running well. So it's kind of satisfying for me, at least as a co-chair that the subcommittee members are engaged in making the project a success. So moreover, I also came up with the alumni mentorship program, which allows ECLP alumni to advise current ECLP representatives for six to 12 months in their career decisions. I learned how to organize big scale events, keep meetings on the agenda to maximize time utilization and organize data and documents neatly so everyone can use them efficiently. These skills are essential for someone like me whose long-term career goal is to lead an independent academic research program. Third, I'm learning how ideas are churned, polished, and implemented when people from different backgrounds and levels come together. For instance, in our multimedia subcommittee, we have members from assistant professors to postdocs and graduate students. It is interesting to see how unique and valuable the feedback can be when it comes from different committee members at different levels. Lastly, I find it very exciting to connect with the faculty advisor at ECLP, as I can see guidance from them about myself, about the transitioning experience from postdoc to faculty. So I think the most exciting thing has just been uh, my involvement on the multimedia subcommittee. So I, uh, the multimedia subcommittee is a relatively new subcommittee, and I was one of the inaugural members. And it's been really exciting to see how we've gone from a, a group of individuals who absolutely have relatively no experience with um, anything in the podcast production pipeline from like, how do you uh, even like make an interview to doing the interview um, to like uh, actually editing and processing the interview. A lot of times when we listen to podcasts, um, everybody makes it seem very, very natural. And um, that I think is us a false sense that it's a very, very easy um, thing to accomplish, but um, it's so exciting how we are continually learning and we have grown leaps and bounds from when we initially started the subcommittee. And it's always exciting to have new subcommittee members who bring in their own experience uh, to this podcasting medium as podcasting becomes more and more, um, uh, more and more applicable to the science communication um, industry and more science communication people are using podcasts. And so I, I'm really just excited for our journey and to see where um, the whole um, uh, podcast goes after I leave uh, the subcommittee. I think one of the most valuable takeaways from my participation in the ECLP program has been um, the emphasis on uh, owning my communication and collaborative skills. Um, through various programs, the workshops we organize, you know, the, the team projects and the mentorship opportunities, 
uh, I have learned to effectively con convey complex ideas and conversations to diversity of the audiences uh, and work seamlessly within the multidisciplinary um, team network. So this newfound ability has not only improved my interactions within the program, but also uh, it has translated directly into my daily work and conversations that I do with my fellow colleagues. For the um, last two years, I have been lucky enough to be the co-chair of the policy and advocacy sub committee. So I have been involved in uh, several projects. Uh, besides being able to increase my time management and networking, writing and leadership skills in general, I have found that one of the most valuable takeaways from the ACLP is the fact that I'm able to share a lot of ideas and thoughts with a lot of like-minded individuals. Um, so I think it's incredible that uh, we can discuss these ideas that we might have had on our own uh, with experts uh, or with other people on our same career level and be able to just talk about it. And maybe some tips not only talk about it, but go ahead and do a write-up or a blog post about it. So for example, um, I have been able to write uh, pieces uh, both for for our newsletter and and our blog posts about um, uh, displacement of natural po population of corn in in Mexico and Central America uh, of the genetic evidence of human migration in the America and even about the elitist criticism to research enterprises in developing countries. So I think that these are really important topics that are not usually brought into attention because they might not be that relevant to people with, all, with other backgrounds, right? Uh, but due to my background as a Honduran immigrant and an underrepresented minority in, in science, um, I have been able to discuss these important topics with other geneticists and have been able to uh, get feedback and just in general, just uh, get the conversation rolling. So I think that um, the, G the ECLP kind of opened my, my eyes that um, there's much more to, to do besides just your bench science, right? There's uh, this whole other world where uh, all of these other scientists are also human beings with their own thoughts and their own feelings. So uh, it's been amazing to be able to collaborate with so many people and be able to talk about all these topics that are not usually heard of, um, but that we can make sure that at least we get our voices heard out there. Um, so the huge diversity that the ECLP provides, I think, has been able to, has allowed me to um, get information from very different backgrounds and learn a lot from uh, all my fellow ECLP members. I think the most valuable takeaway is just um, the interpersonal skills and learning how to work with um, people from many different career stages. So I myself am just a PhD student, um, but we have postdocs um, and other graduate students on the committee, as well as uh, an advisor who is um, an expert in this in their industry. And so it's been it's been a crucial skill to help me develop to one, um, just clear lines of communication amongst uh, subcommittee members, as well as how to interact with uh, postdocs, which is something that I don't have a lot of experience with at my graduate community. Um, but it goes beyond just uh, you know those interpersonal skills, but how do you work with people across um, time zones? Um, how do you um, project manage with all of those individuals to eventually get a final product? Um, on a timeline that you designed. And so um, all those skills combined are something that I definitely would have so much less experience without the ECLP. I have been the co-chair of the community and membership engagement subcommittee. So the most valuable takeaway for me is that I do not need to take every task and that it's good to delegate responsibilities to the subcommittee members and trust them in doing their job. So even if it does not run as expected, there's no need to blame yourself for the slow progress, but it's always good to reach out to people to get them engaged a bit more. Fantastic. Most of the projects 
had not been launched yet. So problem solving strategy and delegation were some skills that were required to have the structure we had right now. We came up with a strategy to have two leads for every project and distribute the members according to their preference so that everyone has an equal amount of work. Time management was also essential to keep the subcommittee running and schedule all the Zoom calls that we had for the different projects. Um, I also noticed that building a good environment within the subcommittee was important to keep people engaged. If any of our applicants have questions for me, please send an email to engagement at genetics-gsa.org. That's the word engagement fully spelled out at genetics fully spelled out dash gsa.org.